So we're going to continue talking about uh, orbitals and the filling order. Uh, so we just sort of got through taking a look at the types and shapes of orbitals. Uh, we noticed that uh, at a particular sublevel, uh, S, and at sublevel P, in, in P and D we have multiple orbitals in the same sublevel. And what that means is that these orbitals are at the exact same energy level, really one P orbital, and there's three P orbitals, right? There's the PX, there's the PY, and the PZ. And they are at the same energy level. So one is not higher or lower than the other. Thank you. And so how they fill these orbitals, uh, it's, it's a little bit, it, it, there's just a, a, a thing you have to know about these orbitals. And what I want to do is I want to, um, I guess we're going to draw the orbitals here real quick. So there's that one orbital, there's another orbital oriented the other way, and then there's orbital sort of coming in and out of the of the uh, board there. So this one here would probably, you probably want to label that the PY orbital, right? This one you might want to label the PX orbital, because typically the horizontal is X and the vertical is Y. And then this one coming in and out of the uh, two-dimensional sort of the screen there is the PZ. Okay. So, if we go back to our periodic table here, I know this is a bit um, convoluted, but over here are the p orbitals. So we have the group of two p orbitals. These electrons right here fill the two p orbitals. So the 1s is here and here. The 2s is right here. And the two p orbital electrons are right here. And so what happens if we have um, carbon, okay? It has four electrons. What happens is two go in the 1s. I'm um, sorry, six electrons. Two go in the 1s, two go in the 2s, and then there's two that have to fill these p orbitals. And basically how it works is one electron goes in the first p orbital. doesn't matter which one it is, x, y, or z. But because they're all at the same level, and, and you think about these two electrons, why would they want to occupy one orbital when there's some open ones for them uh, to occupy? And electrons, remember, they're they're all negatively charged. So if you think about the fact that like charges repel each other, they still want to kind of be as far away from each other as possible. So if you think about the hotel room example, the second uh, electron is not going to jump in here with the other one. It's going to say, hey, I've got some orbitals that are on the exact same energy level. They're available to me. I'm going to go with that. So the electrons fill um, one electron in each P orbital before they get completely filled, okay? And don't don't pay attention to the spin there. It doesn't really matter which way they are, but... Um, so we'll summarize that in saying that because the p orbitals are all the same energy level, electrons um, will half fill the orbitals, the p orbitals first, before completely filling. So, so for carbon, um, you know, like we said here, carbon, let's just back one off. So this is carbon here, the p orbitals. See the two electrons that would be in the p orbitals there. One would go in this p orbital, and the other one would go to the next available open p orbital. So let's just jot down that in summary. So for orbitals on the same energy level, such as the px, py, and pz orbitals that we have drawn here, electrons will half fill each of these identical energy level orbitals first. And so as I mentioned over here, uh, we have this one electron goes here. The next electron would actually go to the next p orbital. If there was a third electron that had to be stacked somewhere, put in an orbital, it would go over here. And then the next orbital, instead of going to the next energy level, they, you know, these orbitals have to be completely filled before electrons can, you know, have to jump to the next energy level. So, so then then they would go back to here, and they would start filling um, these like this, okay? So the filling order is important that way. And um, so electrons half fill orbitals first before uh, before they double up in an orbital, okay? And, and it's, again, think about the, the repulsion of the charge, and they want to stay as far apart for as long as possible. All right, so we've talked about this a little bit before, um, and the textbook on page 124 and 125 
shows you orbital notation. Okay, so let's talk about what orbital notation is. It's a way of showing electrons in specific orbitals. And it's, uh, I want to focus on the word showing, it's more like a, a picture of orbitals. Now all the orbitals are spherical, which is not um, totally accurate, but we're not going to be drawing d orbitals and f orbitals, right? So we'll just make each orbital a circle, and in any one circle, we can only have a maximum of two electrons occupying that. We know that. But look at what's interesting here. Do you see this? Uh, this is oxygen here, all right? This is the orbital notation for oxygen. And let's just go over this here. The first two electrons would fill the 1s. Then the second two electrons would fill the 2s. 2p is next. And remember what we just learned, that the fifth electron would occupy the first p orbital. Then the sixth would go to the next p orbital. So you see you put electrons in each circle first. Okay, so there's seven electrons, and then the eighth one, the last one, would be here, and it would start to double up right there. Okay, so this is orbital notation. Electrons are shown as arrows inside circles, and of course the um, circles, as I said, were orbitals. Half-filled orbitals have one arrow and completely filled orbitals have two arrows. And if I just blow this up a little bit, um, doesn't matter which, you know, uh, which one you put first, but one, you know, one electron you'd show the angular momentum by a little kind of tail at the top, and the other one would have a little tail at the bottom. So that, that would mean an opposite spin, right? Now you may see it, uh, when I learned in high school, it was like this. That's a half-filled orbital. This is a completely filled orbital. That's the way I learned it in high school. If you see a big X there, no more orbital uh, electrons can go in that orbital, right? So th that's okay, too. You'll see this in your textbook, though. So the, the little electrons with the tails. Okay? The other way of showing electrons in sublevels is electron configuration, and this is the one for sure we've uh, I've shown you before in previous classes. But let's go over electron configuration. So there's orbital notation and electron configuration. Two different ways of showing electrons in an atom. So uh, again, this is a second way, another way of showing how many electrons are in each sublevel in an atom. This is an example, helium. Okay, this is the electron configuration for helium. So helium, of course, is number two on the periodic table, right? And it has only two electrons. And so where do those two electrons go? Well, they fill the 1s orbital first. And so you would, this is what you would write. You'd write 1s, so energy level, sublevel, and then as a subscript, you would put how many electrons are in that orbital. What did I say, subscript? Ah, yes, I meant superscript, thank you. Not subscript, yes, thank you. So up, up in the kind of exponent position there, yeah, superscript, thank you. And so here's an example of aluminum. Okay, this is what aluminum looks like. And again, how do you know what order to go in? You follow the periodic table. Okay, so let's just uh, keep that in mind. So if we look at the periodic table, where's aluminum? Aluminum's right here, right? What's the number for aluminum? It's 13. Tough to see there, but that's 13. So we need to put 13 electrons in orbital somewhere. How do we do that? Well, we go like this, and this is how you would you know, do the electron configuration. You would say, okay, obviously there's two in the 1s. So the 1s gets completely filled. The 2s is completely filled. All this, what is this again? These are what orbitals? <coughs> 2p, and they are completely filled. And so how many electrons in the 2p? Six, so that's why you put a six there, okay? Completely filled. And you go to the next row. What's this orbital? One, two, three S. And that's filled. And then what's next over here is the three P 
And there's only one electron there because we have to stop. There's no more. 13. So you put 3p1. So you just go along the periodic table, left to right, and you just keep filling the orbitals until you're, you get to the very last electron. So let's double count here. 2, 4, 10, 12, 13 electrons. We have all of them counted for. You see that? 2, 4, 6, 10, 12, 13. That's what we need, 13 electrons. Are we clear on that? Okay. Take a second. Take a second, and I want you to give me the electron configuration for vanadium. Go ahead and do that, and I'll show you that up on the screen here in a second. Vanadium. All right, so for vanadium, here we go. That's what it should look like. And you just work your way along, so 1s... 2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and then remember, this is the 3d orbital here. Or the, I, I should say orbitals. 3d orbitals. And so the electrons here, there's 1, 2, 3. Then you stop, because there's vanadium, you stop. So in the 3d, there's only 3. So this is partially filled, right? It's only partially filled. You add up all these electrons, 2, 4, 10, 12, 18, 23. Got it? Okay. The orbital notation, okay, very similar. Let's do orbital notation for vanadium as well. Let's do it over here. Okay. So what you would do, again, you do the 1s, and then you put the circle underneath. That's filled. 2s. There's a circle underneath, that's filled. And you continue on. Three orbitals for the 2p, and so this is how they fill. One there, one there, one there. And then the other one, sorry, it's a little crowded. Okay, so there's six, that's completely filled. Continue. Okay, when you get to the 3d, how many orbitals, how many d orbitals are there? Five. Five, yes. <coughs> Okay, now, do I do this? No, I do not. Thank you. Don't do that because they have to partially fill, half fill orbitals first. So it doesn't matter the spin or whatever, but make sure that they're one in each of the d orbitals first. Because the d orbitals, just like the p, these are all in the same energy level, right? p, all in the same, they're identical. Okay, so I want to show you a little uh, video here. And uh, the sound may not come through uh, real well. Here. The video here's the here's the video right here, and um, it's an animated video, <clears throat> sort of. A, it's just talking about the orbitals of scandium, I believe. I'm not sure there's any sound. It doesn't matter. So you see the 1s here, right? A small spherical. So we'll have two electrons in there. The next is the 2s. It's spherical as well, just a little bit larger. So electrons get to go a little bit further away from the nucleus. There is one of the p orbitals. Okay, this is the x axis. So that's the 2px orbital. The 2py orbital. So we kind of draw it like an hourglass. It looks kind of like that. There's a space in the middle because that's where the nucleus is. So the electron does not like to be too close to the, to the nucleus there. Now we'll get the 3s, so again, same shape, just a little bit bigger size, quite a bit bigger size. And the p orbitals. So you see how each energy level, they just, they get, they get to be uh, bigger orbitals. These electrons have higher energy, so they're going to be moving around faster and getting further from the nucleus occupying. And if you think about the, the rooms, the hotel rooms, right? You know, obviously these are getting a little bit further away from the ground floor, right? Okay, big 4S now. And here's one of the D orbitals. Another D orbital. 
that one slides in there. The x squared, y squared. The x, y, remember this x, y goes in between the axes, right? And so the <coughs> orbital lobes are in between the two axes there. x, z, double lobe between the x and the z there. Okay, so there's all the orbitals kind of one at a time again. Okay, so in an, in an atom, all right, it's not just a solid spherical ball like Dalton thought, right? There are subatomic particles, there's the nucleus, there's uh, protons and neutrons in there, and there's electrons flying about. Now, remember, uh, Bohr thought that maybe the electrons travel in orbits like planets around the sun. Okay, but now we see that it's a little more complicated than that. And even though you can kind of see little portions of each orbital, remember that they're not fixed regions, right? They're just sort of uh, areas, and these edges are not really hard edges, right? They're not shells, even though we talk about them as shells. Um, but the electrons really fly around these parts here. They, they go out, you know, maybe once in a while, but that's not very common, okay? So that's sort of what the atom might look like if you could see all of the regions sort of at once. Okay? Any questions? All right. No questions? No? Got it? Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Why don't you get? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a, uh, just a few moments here to to do some get some practice on the orbital notation and uh, things like that. So I'll just pause for a minute.